Hi, my name is Arusha Basen. I am Director of Solution Architecture at Fivetran. Hi everyone, I'm Kelly Koleffel with Fivetran. I'm the Head of Partner Sales Engineering. So Arushi, let's talk a little bit about architectural complexity. There's this dynamic. Uh, my I, favorite topic. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's one we get into a lot, right? Yeah. And I think there's this dynamic between architectural complexity and where prospects and customers fall on the data maturity curve. What, what are your thoughts? Well, architecture is really complex, uh, primarily because um, executives and technical teams are thinking about short-term goals and long-term goals and trying to establish a balance, which is a really hard one. So in my experience, a lot of our prospects are sitting right here. They are reactive to changing market conditions. And a lot of our customers who have adopted Fivetran and are running automated data pipelines are really sitting here where they're focusing all of their resources and energies on initiatives like machine learning, AI, starting new lines of business uh, at record time. So I, I see you saying down here, I think folks maybe are just starting out over here. I'm hearing multiple workloads being developed to drive data outcomes. Absolutely. Um, and they are also creating workloads that are repeatable. So if you create a source to destination data pipeline uh, and you have several sources that look similar, then you can use that pipeline uh, to recreate data pipelines at a much faster pace, get to actionable insights at a much faster pace, and hence proactively uh, create initiatives that are more impactful to your business. And this is not easy to do. I mean, we, we're able to put these boxes up here and, and show this, but to get from the, the far left side to the, to the far right side here, where you are innovating, you're really creating net new value for your organization. I mean, it's easy for us to say it, putting that together with technology, people, and process and approach, I mean, all three of those things have to be working together. Kelly, where are you seeing some of the customers that you're talking to fall on this maturity curve? That's, it's an interesting question. I, I have asked this question a good bit over the last several years. As, as cloud has really come on, as the modern data stack has, has really taken over in terms of how we think about delivering data outcomes, the one thing that I've found that is common, regardless of industry, regardless of size of company, is the higher in an organization the role is that I'm asking that question to, the more they tend to move that that down. They, oh, I'm I'm thinking on a scale of zero on a scale of one to ten that they're oh this is a this is a technology oriented company. They've got to be up in the seven and a half, eight and a half, maybe nine range. And they're saying, no, nope, Kelly, I'm I may be a three and a half, I may be a four, and it always surprises me. And I think a lot of it has to do with the architectural complexity, especially for large enterprises that has been that built into the system, that pressure of complexity has been built into the system, is really hard to overcome. And just you can't just snap your fingers and say, it's done, I'm, I'm not complex anymore, I don't have any technical debt. It tends to weigh you down. Right, absolutely. Um, and some of these activities that you're talking about, um, they're not really a one and done activity. Yeah. Uh, architecture is always evolving. Yeah. You're always going to see complexity. The technology landscape is also always evolving uh, and you're going to see complexity there. Um, so the executives that you're speaking to yeah. have to keep that uh, at the top of their mind. They have to think about long term solutions that not only solve today's problems, but also um, incorporate their future perspective in mind when creating complex architectures. Let's get down to the brass stacks, though. Um, what does it take to create a pipeline and where do you really see the challenges existing in that process of creating not one but several pipelines from several sources to destinations? Yeah, and I think you over the years you've been asked this question a lot. I've been asked this question a lot. I'll this may be a little bit Arushi of a simplistic view, but uh, I'll, I'll I'll give you my perspective on it. So if you look at what it takes for, this is one pipeline, okay? One data movement pipeline. Let's say a database to Snowflake or a database to Databricks or Synapse or Redshift or Google BigQuery, any of the major destinations out there. First of all, you're gonna get some smart people in a room and, or, or on a Google Meet and design this thing, right? So there's a design aspect. What do you wanna do? How do you wanna do it? How fast do you wanna do it? How 
you know, what time frame does this need to be done in? What are the business drivers behind this? I've got this design aspect. Mm -hmm. All right, that's great. Now let's go build it. Again, we're talking for one pipeline here. Let's go build it now. And usually, I think for you and me with our backgrounds, we think of build in terms of sprints. How many sprints is this gonna be? Is this gonna be one, two, three, four, five? Exactly. Uh, I'm a big fan too of, of MVPs. I, I, I feel like what we're talking about here is, is really, really challenging to get into a one or two sprint MVP, but we'll, we'll keep going. So design it, build it. Next, we want to test it, right? Always critical, and this can take a lot of forms depending on you know the, the process and approach that an individual organization has. They may be you know, tested every way possible, or it may be some relatively simple test, but this has to be done one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Then, okay, I've got it tested. Let's at least deploy it on a limited scale and get it out there, let's get a, at least an MVP set of uh, end customers to, to try it out. From there, I probably have learned enough to put some level of automation in here. If I'm not, for me today, if you're not automating, your, your data engineering team is, is just growing crazily. Absolutely. You, you have to automate. There's so many ways to do it, and that is such a critical piece. And then from automation, what about documentation? Right. I got to have my docs, right? Not everybody likes to do documentation, but that's another piece. And then, okay, wow, I've got all this done. Now, who is going to run, it. operate, and maintain? Exactly. Absolutely. Who's going who's gonna to manage that? And then I'm going to ask you to write this last one up. What about all the edge cases that right. I've got to refactor right. for? It's, it's almost impossible to take this into consideration. You try to in design, but inevitably something changes. An API changes, yeah. uh, you know, a, a, a table is dropped unexpectedly. Right. So I've got to refactor for almost an infinite number of edge cases. So all and that's then, great. We're, we're talking in terms of sprints. How do I even get my project in here? What is at, at my current, at, at, at my company today, what's the backlog look like? Mm -hmm. it, it could be it could be very it could be a six month wait a three month wait a four month wait to get this project into the back. This could be one simple data set. Absolutely. Really. Yeah. And so you think about this, and and then you think about all those little bits of minutia to keep this up and running and managed and operating properly. And what Fivetran does really well is take the worry out of it. How much? How many worries do you have trying to make sure all this is done properly? Fivetran takes the worry out of this whole process. Before you dive into that, um, let's set the baseline. Um, if I were to build this in a legacy uh, ecosystem, what would it take? And then let's jump to Fivetran and show that difference. Yeah. I mean, to me, I feel like you're looking at a minimum of probably four sprints to, yeah. to get this Wait. done. Okay. What, what do you think? No, I, I was actually going to suggest six sprints. Yeah. Uh, usually it's about a, a sprint to design, about two sprints to build and test, yeah. another sprint to deploy. Okay, wait, what'd right. you, oh, how many to design? At least one to two sprints. One, one to two. Right, two to build. Yeah. Um, one to test, one to deploy. It's roughly about six sprints and even if you put that later exactly. on right so yeah i mean you're looking at that's it's a what we're talking about 12 weeks 10 to 12 weeks minimum right yeah absolutely depending on if you're doing two week sprints or three week sprints because i have seen those as well that's tough that i mean tough. you know again to me staying relevant in data you've got to have speed i've got i've got to get to that data outcome on the end much much quicker having the patience to do this for one data pipeline as a cdo cto cio right i don't know that's tough to to justify absolutely and then you actually multiply that by your number of pipelines let's say yeah. you have 10 times the pipelines yeah. and then you have to multiply it by the number of sources that you have to do this for. Yeah. 
Yes. You, you've, you've basically just consumed in it. You're, you're, what you're really illustrating here is why data pipeline backlog, data pipeline or just data product and services backlogs are so large right. right now because a lot of people are doing it this way. Okay, 10 minutes is the time it takes. Remember that, that drawing we just showed, the time it takes to move any source to any destination. So this is 10 minutes, I think, or less. Mm -hmm. It can be or less. So it's very fast to me. So if you say, what is Fivetran giving me? In the modern data stack, to simplify complex architectures, it's giving me speed. I don't have 10 to 12 weeks or five to six sprints to achieve a pipeline. Okay, that's cool, I've got that. This 100 is 100% of the time, and this is what we talked about earlier, Arushi, 100% of the time for verifiably, verifiably, <laughs> for verifiably correct normalized data mm -hmm. that's understandable, oh my goodness, that's understandable, and is um, actionable. Actionable. I like that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, my, my handwriting, not great. So 10 minutes, time to destination, 100% verifiable. So to me, this speaks to operational sustainability. All those weird edge cases that I have to refactor when I'm building my own pipelines. Right. Fivetran does a really nice job of giving me that, and you talked about it earlier, 99.9% right. uptime. uptime. Right. Uh, can I just add yeah. on to that? Um, the way you actually get to that operational sustainability and scalability uh, with Fivetran is schema, is schema read, is yep. automated schema read. Uh, and so if something changes at your source, Fivetran recognizes it and makes sure that your destination gets it. So you no longer have to spend time thinking about your source and constantly monitoring your source and constantly monitoring your downstream pipelines because Fivetran takes care of it. Uh, it's, it's so important. And you know that, that piece right there, if you, if you go through and set up a pipeline and, and set up a you know, source to destination with Fivetran, you go, wow, this looks really simple. You dig into the logs and you go, wow, there's a lot going on here to all of those things that you, talk, uh, you talked about, uh, the, the schema drift, normalization, if you know, something happens with a particular column or table. Um, the third one here, so 10 minute time uh, source to destination, any data source really, 100% verifiably correct, normalized, actionable data, uh, usable data, trusted usable data. And the zero is amount of time spent on data engineering or data pipeline development. In other words, with Fivetran, I don't have to have a team of data engineers or application developers that are constantly doing these things right here, right? I've, yeah. got, I've got speed, I've got operational sustainability, I've got simplicity. We talked about architectural, I've now got simplicity. And the nicest thing is here, if it's, only data engineers and developers that are actually able to um, do to create pipelines. It's not very self-service. To me, Fivetran, I've got a self-service tool that even a business analyst could create a pipeline with. I don't have to develop anything. So Kelly, what you're really telling me is uh, that you can create automated data pipelines that are fully managed um, and essentially enable that as a self-service option, not just for uh, data engineers or development teams, but also for business users uh, to get access to data quickly um, and have trusted information, trusted data within their reach so that they can make actionable decisions in a timely manner. Um, this, is, this is really great. These are some of the reasons why in that previous slide we, we saw that our prospects a lot of the prospects mm -hmm. that we're talking to really want to move into this proactive, innovative space and hence are adopting a dual uh, a platform like Fivetran. You're right, Arushi. I mean, it, Fivetran is the linchpin to getting over there. It is the way that you do it and make it happen quickly and efficiently. 
And what I like to do is, is get hands on. Mm -hmm. So we have a 14 day free trial, which you know that you can uh, spin up Fivetran. You can do it with really any destination. We actually, uh, if you don't have a destination you've decided upon right now, a cloud data platform, we actually have a Google BigQuery managed service that you can use and we'll take care of it for you. So any destination, any cloud data platform, 14 day free trial, connect up a source. And I like to tell people just start maybe with, a, I don't know, Google Sheets or start with a, a storage Salesforce? bucket. Salesforce? Yeah, Salesforce, Salesforce. I can use a developer account on Salesforce. I don't have to use my production information. It's a right. great way to get a feel for Fivetran doing application data movement or a file data movement. If you want it, if you have a database that's available, maybe a test database, uh, Postgres, MySQL, SQL Server, Oracle, you could do that as well. And then, um, you know, if you have an event system, maybe there's there's folks that are looking to do some really cool stuff more in real time, uh, Kinesis or uh, Kafka, Confluence, something like that.